to carry out these experiments, ask a friend to stand up and look straight ahead. Ask him to raise one of his arms to shoulder level. Place one of your hands under his upper arm and the other under his hand while standing in front of him. His arm will now be supported in an horizontal position by your two hands. Tell him to relax the muscles of his arm, repeating the instruction several times. Then ask him if he has done so. Keep your own hands perfectly steady during this procedure. When in response to your inquiry, he tells you his arm is relaxed, withdraw your hands suddenly. If his arm muscles have been completely relaxed, his arm will immediately drop limply to his side. If there has been only a partial relaxation, the arm will fall slowly. If there has been no relaxation, the arm will remain outstretched. If your subject has failed to relax correctly, explain to him that though we may believe we know what relaxation is, in actual fact, we may fail in a practical sense to achieve it. Repeat the experiments until your, until your subject grasps the idea. You can vary this procedure by using the other arm, then both arms together, bringing both arms out in front of you instead of sideways. A swaying test. For your next test, Explain first to your subject that you are now going to demonstrate how suggestion affects the imagination. Ask him to stand erect with his feet close together. Tell him to close his eyes and make his mind a blank and listen to you. Now tell him that he will be unable to stand perfectly still because he will start to sway slightly from side to side. Tell him that the harder he tries to maintain his balance, the more difficult it will become. Watch his movements and amplify your suggestions with appropriate comments, such as, now you are swaying to the right, and now to the left. Now you are swaying backwards, and now forwards. Keep up these suggestions for a minute or two. There is a close parallel to be drawn between this experiment and the exercise of Chevrolet's pendulum. The muscular movements are, in fact, both due to cases of suggestion. Do not feel disappointed if your subject remained immovable. The reason for the failure may have been because the subject selected was consciously or unconsciously not cooperating, or perhaps because your suggestions were unconvincing, or some outside disturbance may have distracted his attention. There are many reasons why suggestions, both to ourselves and others, may fail from time to time. Do not be disappointed, but analyze what has happened. Remember, the main object of your experiment at this stage is to gain experience. The sway and test second stage. Next, ask your subject to stand upright again with his eyes closed and feet together. Stand behind him and say, I am going to place my fingers on the back of your neck, there. At the same time, firmly pressing your fingers on the base of his skull and say, I am going to draw my finger backwards gently and you will find yourself swaying backwards with it. Assure him that he will not fall because you will stop him as soon as he begins to sway backwards. Then very, then very steadily and slowly draw your hands backwards and you will if your suggestion has been convincing, start to sway backwards. Stop him by placing your hands on his shoulder. Repeat this experiment several times. It is better to keep your subject's attention engaged, so even what you say is maybe somewhat repetitive, continue to comment authoritatively on the way suggestion, playing on the imagination, influences our actions. These explanations play an important part in the experiments for they provide the opportunity of planting suggestions in the subject's mind. If the average subject implicitly accepts your word that what you suggest will happen in an experiment, then almost invariably it will happen. 
If on the other hand, he is critical or antagonistic, the experiment will, in all probability, be a failure or only partially successful. Therefore, in making your suggestions, phrase what you say in such a manner as to be acceptable to the subject and not likely to arouse any unconscious resentment. The Swain Test's third stage. Proceed to say something on the following lines. The success of this experiment depends entirely on your ability to keep your mind clear. Just push all of the thoughts out of your mind and listen to me. I'm going to place my fingertips on your temples. And as I draw my fingers, my hands forward, you will find yourself swaying forward. Whilst giving these instructions, illustrate what you are saying by placing your fingers on your own temples. And as you say the above words, <clears throat> you will find yourself swaying forward, illustrate by actually swaying forward yourself. This little illustration, if deftly executed, exercises considerable influence on the subject. Next, say, that's right, put your feet closer together, your toes as well as your heels. Stand to attention, hold your head up, and look straight at me, just balancing upright. Note the emphasized words. These are significant. As you say them, put your hands on the subject's shoulders and gently sway him backwards an inch or so, then bring him forward again to the upright. See that he does not move his feet and that he does not raise himself up onto his toes. Now rock him gently backwards and forwards several times, telling him to let himself balance upright. The object of this is to loosen his calf muscles and see that they are not rigidly braced. When ready, tell your subject to look straight at you to keep his mind clear. And whilst you are talking, stretch out your arms towards him and place your fingers lightly on his temples. Continue talking, and at what you judge to be the right moment, or if you feel a slight forward movement, draw your hands towards you, keeping your fingers still on his temples. At the same time, say, you are coming forward, forward, forward. A slow movement and considerable practice is necessary to calculate just when and at what rate the hands are to be removed. You can vary this experiment if you wish by having the subject close his eyes and keeping them closed throughout the test. Another suggestibility test is locking the subject's hands together. For the next attempt, instruct your subject to clasp his hands together. The standing position is best, but you may be seated if you wish. The palms of his hands should be pushed hard against each other and his fingers interlaced. Now ask him to think that his hands are so tightly fastened together that he will be unable to move them. Tell him to think that his hands have become stuck together and to keep repeating it to himself. Instruct him to look straight at you and under no circumstances to look away. Now place your hands outside his and press his hands together. At the same time, looking at him steadily and saying, press together firmer, tighter, tighter still. They are beginning to stick. They are sticking together tightly. You will not be able to get them apart. The harder you try, the more impossible it will be. <clears throat> then pause and pronounce firmly, your hands are tightly fastened together. You cannot unclasp them. Remove your own hands from his, but continue to gaze fixedly at him and continue your suggestions. Some people, however hard they try, will be unable to get their hands apart. If he is unable to unclasp his hands, say to him in a quiet and confident manner, all right, stop trying. I'm going to count, and when I get to three, you will be able to un unclasp them. One, two, three, you can now open them. You will then be able to open them, for your earlier suggestions have been neutralized. It is much easier to remove this effect than produce it. The influence of your suggestions is likely to weaken as soon as your suggestions cease or as your subjects look away. Another suggestibility test is the armchair test. 
Another conditioning test is to tell the subject to sit in the armchair with his legs stretched out and his arms relaxed. When he is comfortable, relaxed, tell him he is not to move his arms or legs and that when his eyes are closed, he will find that he is unable to stand up. Then tell him impressively to close his eyes. If all these instructions are given in an authoritative manner, the subject, in all probability, will not be able to stand up. The loss of volitional control experienced by the subject will be commensurate when the measure, with the measure with which he has accepted the instruction affecting the movement of his limbs. It is manifestly impossible to get out of the chair without establishing a new centre of gravity, which would involve the movement of the limbs. The success of these experiments depends on your ability to give instructions with such conviction that they are accepted and believed by the subject without questioning. Regard these tests as experiments in suggestion, which is what they are. If your experiments were only partly effective, think about what has occurred. Discuss this experience with your subject. Try and discover the causes of failure. Often they are obvious, some noises or distractions, unsteadiness in your voice, some hesitation in your manner. Sometimes it may be simply that the fact that your subject did not understand your meaning due to some slight ambiguity in speech. Discuss the matter thoroughly. Find out what he thinks about the experiments, what his reactions are. Reverse the roles and get him to make the same suggestions to you. This will give you some idea how you react to suggestions.